so in this article guys we have from the foreign affairs from july 26th why america forgets and china remembers the korean war देखो कोल्ड वॉर की बिगिनिंग में 1950 टू 1953 हमारा जो कोरियन क्राइसिस रहा है जो कोरियन वॉर रहा है इंडिया के जो प्राइम मिनिस्टर थे नेहरू जी आपके उनको पीस एम्बेसडर बनाया गया था इस सो कॉल्ड कोरियन वॉर के अंदर बिल मसला जो है वो 38th पैरेलल का है 38th एट पैरल या थर्टी लैटिट्यूड बोलते हैं जो दोनों सो कॉल्ड नॉर्थ कोरिया और साउथ कोरिया को जो है वो डिवाइड करता है तो आर्टिकल के अंदर एक बहुत यूनिक बात यह है कि अमेरिका क्यों भूल गया है या भूल जाता है और चाइना याद रखता है कोरियन वॉर को पंचलाइन में लिखा है द चाइनीज कॉम्युनिस्ट पार्टीज डेंजरस हिस्टोरिकल डिस्टोशन एंड द स्ट्रगल ओवर ताइवान कि ये जो चाइना जिस कदर हिस्टोरिकल डिस्टोशन कर रहा है इन द नेम और इन दी एक्शन ऑफ ताइवान या ओवर ताइवान और जो स्ट्रगल चल रहा है ताइवान के ऊपर उनके लिए तो चलिए वो देखने वाली चीज है एक्सी सेवेंटी ईयर्स एगो दिस वीक द आर्मिस्टाइज दैट फ्रोज द कोरियन वॉर वॉज साइन सीज फायर हुआ ड्यूरिंग द ईयर ऑफ सैवेज बैटल फील्ड मैन न्यूवरिंग एंड टू मोर ऑफ बेटर स्टेल मेड नियरली फोर्टी थाउजेंड अमेरिकन ट्रूप गेव देयर लाइफ साउथ कोरिया को सपोर्ट कर रहे थे नॉर्थ कोरिया में यूएसएसआर सपोर्ट कर रहा था Several thousand more allied troops also died, as did millions of Koreans, many of them heroically in combat against communist aggression, and even more as its civilian victims. The southern half of the Korean Peninsula, now a thriving democracy, took decades to recover. The northern half never has, remaining impoverished, oppressed, and a source of instability. North Korea ki baat ho rahi. The median age of surviving US Korean war veterans is around 90. Recognition of their service has been unforgivably muted despite their valor in some of the most grueling combat American troops have ever faced. But the more general US lack of interest in the war's strategic lessons is also remarkable and dangerous. Ki aisa kyun hai ki jo lessons unhone wahan pe seekh kiye aaj ki date mein unko uska dhyan nahi hai. Well in China by contrast the war to resist America and aid Korea as it is officially known has never been forgotten and in recent years the Chinese communist party has been aggressively seeking to revive the public's interest in an idealized version of it well in march an essay in the chinese communist party's top theoretical general praised how the chinese army defeated the world's number one enemy armed to the teeth on the korean battlefield and performed mighty and majestic battle dramas that shocked the world and caused ghosts and gods to weep in a disturbing 2020 speech commemorating the anniversary of china's entry into the war chinese leader xi jinping made it clear that its legacy is central to his dark vision of china's role in the world claiming that beijing's intervention began when a war started by the imperialist aggressors reached china's door xi drew lessons for the present ki aaj bhi americans jo hain wo yahi kar rahe hain aur aapko jaise wahan apne heroism dikhaya tha aaj bhi wohi dikhana hai well in the korean war he said china resolved to send those aggressors a message they will understand today such aggressors can be reminded that ki with an iron will China wrote an earth-shaking epic defeating an enemy rich in steel but weak in will. So in the view of the Chinese Communist Party from 1950 to 1953 an immensely weak China reeling from its own recently concluded civil war fought the titanic power of the United States and its western allies to a standstill establishing that ki Beijing's strategic demands could not be ignored right in the beginning for the party this conviction remains unshakable even though the truth is that communist aggression triggered the war and the performance of chinese troops hundreds of thousands of whom died was vastly worse than ccp propaganda suggest par aaj ki rate mein dekho ji hamari jo fact finding approach hai wo kisi ko chahiye nahi 
सिर्फ ओपिनियन जो आपके सीसीपी के द्वारा प्रेजेंट किए जा रहे हैं अपने लोगों के सामने वो ज्यादा मायने रख रहे हैं राधा दिन की पीपल आर नॉट विलिंग टू गो इन टू दिस्ट्री टू फाइंड आउट द डिटेल की एक्चुअली में लड़ाई किसने शुरू की थी और जैसा उन्होंने कहा कि इंपीरियलिस्ट एग्रेसर आपके दरवाजे पे आ पहुंचा तो हमने लड़ाई लड़ी और उनको मिट्टी में मिलाया तो वो ज्यादातर लोग यही मांग रहे हैं so in the light of china's aggressions today united states must understand how china is using the korean war's legacy as a form of political preparation for wars to come well at the same time there must be an honest reckoning with why the united states has buried its memories of the conflict for so long well the korean war is ambiguously sandwiched in the us public consciousness between memories of victory in world war 2 and perceptions of tragedy in vietnam dono ke beech se mein jo hai wo fasa hua hai aapka ye and elite consensus has settled on approval of president harry truman's leadership during the korean war particularly his focus on preventing escalation so at the time however americans took a dimmer view of truman's handling of the conflict which opened with shocking military setbacks and continued for 2 years of self imposed costly stalemate before ending in a frustrating armistice so americans have long struggled to interpret let alone celebrate this brutal but limited action fought in a secondary theater coming so soon after victory and ending in a tie but the american tendency to forget the truth and the chinese eagerness to remember a complicated mix of fact and fiction offer their own lessons to both of them which are especially relevant in view of potential for war over taiwan ye lesson hai aaj ki date mein ki dono ke liye hi is pure theater ke andar jo aaj se pehle 70 saal pehle jo hua hai dono countries ko ye baat dhyan honi chahiye ki jab aakhri baar ya last time jo wo yahan pe bhide the to kya results nikle the to pehla lesson ye hai ki washington must not neglect deterrence and readiness The Korean War was almost lost as a consequence of the Truman administration's failures on both the fronts. By the late 1940s, America's security establishment was committed to facing the challenge presented by Soviet power, but deeply divided about what doing so would require and what precisely should be defended. So in January 1950, 5 months before North Korea invaded its southern neighbor, US Secretary of State Dean Acheson gave a speech on US policy in Asia at the National Press Club and when he listed the countries included within the US defensive parameter in the region he conspicuously excluded South Korea even though it was occupied by American troops until the middle of 1949 aur uske bawajood bhi inhone jo hai speech mein nahi bola So it is not quite right to say as Acheson's political opponents later did that this omission was the blunder that invited the North invasion kyunki unhe laga hoga ki Americans to South Korea ko consider hi nahi kar rahe uske bawajood bhi ki inhone jo hai wo iske upar occupation apni kar rakhi hai uske bawajood bhi nahi kar rahe to North ko ye trigger diya hoga ki if they are not considering South Korea so we can go and attack and nobody will come to the rescue of South Korea jabki in truth Acheson's full remarks were a fair if ambiguously worded characterization of the Truman administration's Korea policy so Acheson suggested that ki Washington's direct responsibility for South Korea had ended he implied that like any other sovereign country South Korea would now need to rely on itself in the event of an attack and failing that to rely on the commitments of the entire civilized world under the charter of the united nations and if anyone had bothered to ask who might do the fighting on behalf of the civilized world and the united nations essential incoherence of the administration's policy would have been swiftly revealed kyunki aapne full might ke bare mein jab baat ki hai sawal waqai sahi hai ki agar koi ladai karta bhi hai south korea ke sath to phir wo full might aapki charter of the united nations ko follow karne wali kaun hai kaun si power hai jo us so called uh, matlab element ko leke aayegi south korea ke defense pe usko bachane so acheson's remarks were reviewed carefully in the kremlin as well Soviet leader Joseph Stalin was looking for opportunities to probe American resolve beyond the Cold War's main European theater 
and two weeks after Akizan spoke, he gave the North Korean ruler Kim Second Sung permission to invade. Together, the two despots wagered that the United States would not fight for the South, a wager that many American leaders would also have placed before the invasion began. Dono ne yehi socha, dekho jo baat kar rahe, ki shayad Americans aapke South Korea ko defend karne nahi aayenge. A communist invasion in Asia coming on the heels of the CCP's takeover of China was covered with shock and drama by the American media and US public opinion coalesced swiftly in support of intervention. कहते हैं उससे पहले Asia के अंदर China के अंदर भी ये काम already हो चुका था जब कैसे Mao Zedong ने Chiang Kai-shek जो हमारे nationalist government थी उसको overpower करके China में communism को install किया था उस समय भी कहते हैं अमेरिकन पब्लिक ओपिनियन यही था कि अगर आप इंटरवीन करके कम्युनिज्म को वहां से खदेड़ सको तो वो ज्यादा बेटर अ पुअरली टाइम्ड सोवियत बॉयकॉट ऑफ द यूएन सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल परमिटेड दैट बॉडी टू ऑफिशियली कंडेम द इन्वेजन एंड ट्रूमन डिसाइडेड दैट यूएस इंटरवेंशन डिस्क्राइब्ड एज अ पुलिस एक्शन इन दोस टाइम्स वुड प्रोसीड अंडर द यूएन बैनर अमेरिकन्स देखिए उस समय जो भी किया करते थे इन द नेम ऑफ प्रिवेंशन ऑफ द कम्युनिज्म फ्रॉम स्प्रेडिंग दैट वाज रिगार्डेड एज द इंटरनेशनल पुलिसमैन टैक्टिक वो इसको इस बात से देखते थे कि मतलब वी आर द पुलिस ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल वर्ल्ड एंड वी आर प्रिवेंटिंग द कम्युनिज्म फ्रॉम स्प्रेडिंग ताकि पूरी दुनिया जो है इंगल्फ ना हो जाए इस आइडियोलॉजी के अंदर सो वाशिंगटन हाउएवर वाज अनप्रिपेयर्ड टू फाइट The Truman administration's tragic diplomatic short-sightedness was compounded by the deterioration of the U.S. military's capabilities from an admittedly unsustainable peak of over 12 million in 1945. The number of active U.S. troops had plummeted by nearly 90 percent. There were far too few to man the distant ramparts against the Soviet Empire and its allies. Defense spending had similarly withered, dropping from 40% of GDP in 1945 to roughly 5% in 1950. The quality of the active forces equipment and its training and fighting culture had also degraded in ways difficult to quantify but ably documented in histories of the period. Result was that ki when the United States responded to the communist offensive by sending ground troops to the peninsula large us formations were frequently defeated and sometimes annihilated by soviet trained north korean units and later chinese volunteers well such outcomes were shocking then and they should focus our attention now well in terms of both strategic deterrence and military readiness contemporary us policy has alarming parallels with 1950 from its recent peak of 4.5% of gdp in 2010 us defense spending has fallen to 3.1% of gdp and is still shrinking more a manpower crisis threatens the all volunteer force the army missed its 2022 recruiting goal by a shocking 25% compelling changes in its force structure before they are supposed to fight chinese So Washington's official stance on defending Taiwan forged in the 1950s remains one of strategic ambiguity. Aaj tak bhi jo hai Taiwan ko ye baat clear nahi hai ki basically when Chinese are going to attack whether the Americans will come to aid the Taiwan directly or will that be just a material support as Americans are providing to Ukraine. They are not still understanding that. But today the ambiguity often seems distinctly less than strategic because President Joe Biden has repeatedly stated that the United States will use force to defend Taiwan only to see his own staff intervene to soften his remarks. So meanwhile, United States has failed to make sufficient military investments especially in short range and intermediate range missiles that would render a defense of the island more plausible. As in 1950, United States seems to be tempting a tyrant in Beijing who harbors imperial ambitions to try his luck. जैसे उस समय आपके so called Kim Jong second कर रहे थे या जो जब Stalin ने किया था, in the wake of finding out that the American so calls are not supposed to defend the South Korea. आज की date में भी अगर उनको यही realize हो रहा है that Americans don't have the capability to support Taiwan, तो they will proceed. वैसे भी एक article हमने पढ़ा हुआ है. जहां पे 2027 के अंदर ये प्रिडिक्ट किया गया है दैट चाइनीज आर गोइंग टू अटैक ताइवान 
So following the near disaster in the summer of 1950, troops under US General Douglas MacArthur's command made dramatic progress into the north. That, however, led to a Chinese intervention that MacArthur initially failed to detect and that brutally drove UN forces south again. Chinese Throughout these terrible surprises and setbacks, greater portions of the US military machine were brought gradually to bear with the result that by the summer of 1951, military prospects for communist forces on the peninsula had grown bleak. The momentum generated by the Chinese intervention had been reversed and under the inspired leadership of US General Matthew Rigway, UN forces again went on the offensive, backed by enormous economic resources and tremendous American military might in the air and at sea. Conditions for Chinese and North Korean troops steadily deteriorated, obviating their advantage in manpower and ability to absorb shocking human losses. But meanwhile, in June 51, the Truman administration still rattled by its early battlefield losses and under significant international pressure announced its desire for a ceasefire. So given these circumstances, why did the war last another two years? If 1951 ke June announced for the ceasefire, then why did the war last another two years? Why did the war last another two the answer reveals a second valuable lesson that politics and combat are deeply intertwined. Today, as then, US adversaries enjoy a much more sophisticated grasp of the interplay between battlefield maneuvering and political warfare than their American counterparts do. And for the CCP in particular, there is no dichotomy today between peace and war. So following expressions of support by the United Nations and the Truman administration for a ceasefire along the 38th parallel, the latitude line at which US military planners chose to divide North and South Korea after World War II, Rigway proposed that the ceasefire talks take place at sea. The enemy agreed but insisted that the talks occur on land at Kesong, one of the few places where communist forces remained south of the 38th parallel. So this forced the UN delegation to approach the site of the talks displaying white flags. Ki finally situation jo hai wo normalized ho gayi. So these delegates thought that they were attending the first session of negotiations ultimately intended to achieve peace on the peninsula, but they were slow to understand that the communist delegation had entirely different objectives in mind. Communist negotiators refused even to agree to an agenda, furiously denounced the UN delegation's use of the term communist and insisted that UN forces withdraw further south. The themes of this embarrassing episode were recapitulated throughout two more tortuous years of talks and as T.R. Fehrenbach, a historian of the period, put it, communist forces had succeeded in transferring the war from the battlefield where they were losing to the negotiating table where they might still achieve something. So having regained the advantage, communist leaders would not soon relinquish it. They exploited the pause in the UN counter-offensive because now we couldn't fight because they were not fighting in front of us. Now, it was clear to me that the UN was going to be offensive to the UN communist offensive and they were fighting in the battlefield. But they started the negotiations and now they have their upper advantage. Now, the problem for the UN is that now they can't do counter-offensive because they are in front of us. They have announced the ceasefire. So, they exploited the pause in the UN counter-offensive, which the UN had unilaterally offered in good faith with the commencement of talks to dig deep into the earth around their own front line. So this action shielded their front line formations from American air power and rendered further major UN advances north, for example, to a naturally defensible line between Pyongyang and Wonsan, significantly more difficult. Mushkil ho gaya bahut zada. उन सारे गेंस को जो आपने पहले एक साल में समर ऑफ़ द 1950 टू समर ऑफ़ द 51 तक जो आपने गेंस किए अब उनको बनाए रखना काफी हार्ड हो गया। So having consolidated their position on the battlefield as well, meanwhile 
communist negotiators declared in august that their un interlocutors were acting in bad faith and broke off talks negotiations did not resume till october and thereafter one outrageous pretext after the next was deployed to obstruct progress take advantage of the un's naivety and humiliate the united nations in the court of global opinion especially regarding the issue of prisoners of war and meanwhile wo apne aap ko regroup kar rahe the itne samay the united nations sought to treat communist prisoners of war in accordance with the geneva conventions communist captors treated un prisoners of war with remarkable cruelty on the other hand and approximately 40% of american prisoners of war died in captivity and meanwhile according to surveys conducted in united nations prisoners of war camps many of the enemy prisoners held in the south expressed an understandable desire not to be repatriated to north korea or china even you can believe that ki unhi ke soldiers jo north koreans aur chinese hain jo aapke un camps mein hain wo khud ye ichha jata rahe hain ki please hame wapas mat bhejo aap yani ki itne bure halat the unke khud ke deshon mein but the communist orchestrated a series of sophisticated gambits integrating rewards by organized party cadres in the camps with positions taken at the negotiating table to project an alternate reality and many in the press and in foreign ministries around the world took it as a fact that the united nations was mistreating prisoners of war and preventing their longed for repatriation jabki kar wo rahe the and this would be the principal issue on which negotiations foundered as communist negotiators insisted until 1953 that the un repatriate all of the prisoners it had again the parallels between the 1950s and today are clear that there is something innocent and irrepressible in the western inability to accept that opponents of the united states do not think the way americans do and particularly that the ccp sees no shame in twisting the truth to advance its ambitions so recently after the covid-19 pandemic began international authorities rushed to assist china and to investigate the source of the outbreak in a spirit of genuine concern par jabki in stark contrast the ccp closed off all cooperation destroyed evidence caused key personnel to disappear and mounted a campaign to claim that the virus originated in a us military lab in maryland political warfare is a constant for the chinese communist party united states and the international order that it backs are still its targets today even without a hot war so clear cut wo bata rahe hain ki jis kadar dirty tactics ko deploy us samay bhi kiya gaya tha communist forces ke dwara aaj bhi chinese aapke wohi kar rahe hain and americans tab bhi is baat ko samajh nahi pa rahe the and even today The Korean War dragged on through 159 plenary sessions of talks and two long years of additional violence. There is a tendency in later commentary to forgive the Truman administration for these stalemate years on the ground that the president also managed to prevent the war from escalating. In April 1951, Truman relieved MacArthur of his command in Korea. This event now forms a central episode in positive accounts of Truman's leadership of the war. That a plain mannered Cold War liberal devoted to containing the conflict and preserving alliances, staring down a megalomaniacal right-wing general who told Truman first that the Chinese would not intervene and then argued for expanding the war by attacking China directly, including with nuclear weapons. Even. तो कहते उस जनरल को हटाना ये बल्कि इस आज की डेट में अगर देखा जाए तो ट्रूमन की लीडरशिप के पॉजिटिव अकाउंट्स हैं सो देर इज नो देर इज ट्रूथ टू दिस कैरेक्टराइजेशन ऑफ हिज बट बीनीथ इट्स टोन ऑफ सेल्फ कॉन्ग्रेचुलेशन दिस कंसेंसस अकाउंट अंडर रेट्स द कोस्ट ऑफ प्रोलॉन्जिंग द वॉर एंड ओवर रेट्स द रिस्क ऑफ एस्कलेशन दैट एग्जिस्टेड इन नाइनटीन absolving the truman administration of blame for the war's stalemate phase tends to assume that ki there were only two options available to decision makers in the first half of 1951 what actually happened or world war third it also loses sight of how in the face of the enemy's intransigence 
United States lack of diplomatic sophistication combined with its self-imposed military restraint allowed many thousands more to die only to achieve worse outcomes than were available in 1951. The consequences for the Korean Peninsula and the growth of CCP power continue to resonate even today. So to be clear here, relieving MacArthur of his command was justified. If anything, Truman waited too long to do it after MacArthur failed to anticipate or even detect the Chinese intervention and then grew increasingly insubordinate, criticizing Truman and the Joint Chiefs of Staff in his communications with Congress. But reducing the Truman-MacArthur conflict to a ready-made morality tale obscures the more complicated policy debate that the two men were having in between. Between the extremes of Truman's restraint and the possibility of global war, numerous options existed for him. Just like Truman's decision to renounce nuclear threats and to restrict combat operations to Korea and its airspace prolonged the war and paradoxically extended the period in which it could have escalated. So Truman's military restraint and the attitude of his successor, Junkie Agle President died, Dwight Eisenhower, make for a study in contrast. Eisenhower defeated Adlai Stevenson in the 1952 presidential election in no small part because of public disgust over the stalemate in Korea. Although Truman and his advisors mostly seemed to wish that the war wasn't happening at all, as President-elect Eisenhower travelled to the Korean Peninsula and embraced the war's challenges. From the outset of his tenure, he regularly contemplated and discussed the possibility of escalation, even approving the development of war plans that involved even the use of nuclear weapons. In May 1953, U.S. Secretary of State John Dewells informed Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru that the U.S. might escalate its tactics in Korea. And by July, the Communists had signed the armistice. ये एक बार फिर से दिखाना चाह रहे हैं कि जब अमेरिकन्स ने रिस्ट्रेंट बरतना बंद किया और जब उन्होंने अपनी सो कॉल्ड मिलिट्री माइट को प्रवोक किया इंटरनेशनल लेवल के ऊपर नतीजा आपके सामने है कि मई में उन्होंने बोला कि वो एस्कलेट कर सकते हैं शायद टैक्टिक्स को और जुलाई में दो महीने के बाद कम्युनिस्ट ने आर्मिस्टाइज साइन कर लिया था जबकि दो साल पहले जब आपने देखा कि कम्युनिस्ट आपके जब खुद नेगोशिएशंस की बात की और यूनाइटेड नेशन पीस कीपिंग फोर्सेस ने गुड फेथ के अंदर डील को साइन करना चाहा उस समय वो बैकफायर करने लगे सो व्हाट रोल आइजनहोवर्स विलिंगनेस टू रेज द स्टेक्स प्लेड इन द वॉर्स एंड इज स्टिल अ सब्जेक्ट ऑफ फियर्स डिबेट अमंग हिस्टोरियंस Indeed, it remains unclear whether Nehru passed Duell's threat on to Stalin or not, and many other factors led to the armistice, but most significantly, Stalin's death in March 1953 removed the war's true originator from the picture. So, it was a very big reason that our Stalin, who was the first time to fight the war, because when you saw that he told him that he was going to invade him, he was going to invade him. उनके जाने के बाद भी एक कारण था। But फिर भी, when the Truman administration repeatedly offered olive branches and held back on the battlefield, United States enemies redoubled their efforts. But Eisenhower argued during his campaign that what Truman called a police action was in fact a necessary crusade. Months after Eisenhower signaled that the party was about to come to an end, one way or another, the armistice was concluded. Eisenhower would again exhibit this kind of determination during the 1954-55 Taiwan Strait Crisis, securing advance authorization from Congress to use military force, publicly stating that he was willing to use tactical nuclear weapons in a war with China and surging military assets to the region. U.S. allies signaled their discomfort as they surely would have in 1951 had Truman been more aggressive. वो तब भी करते पर उन्होंने तब किया नहीं था क्योंकि Truman की गुड की पॉलिसीज़ ही थोड़ी सी आपकी reliant थी, soft थी. But the gambit in the Strait succeeded and Eisenhower was extremely meticulous when it came to alliance management. 
In 1957, he said his foreign policy vision was simple: to wage the Cold War in a militant but reasonable style, whereby we appeal to the people of the world as a better group to hang with than the communism. And today, as then, only the United States can mobilize the free world in order to prevent and, if necessary, to win a war. और तीसरा लेसन कोरियन वॉर का ये निकल के आता है कि वंस फाइटिंग हैज ब्रोकन आउट एक्सेसिव सेल्फ रिस्ट्रेंट कैन इनवाइट फर्दर एग्रेशन बिकॉज दैट विल अगेन गिव टाइम एंड द आई विल से अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर द एनिमीज टू रीग्रुप अगेन डिमॉन्स्ट्रेटिंग अ क्रेडिबल विलिंगनेस टू एस्कलेट एंड द कैपेसिटी टू डोमिनेट शुड सच एस्कलेशन बी रिक्वायर्ड कैन प्रोमोट पीस to point out this paradox is not to express a desire for world war third here but to prescribe a course for its prevention so united states forgot the korean war because its outcome was unsatisfactory even shameful in the eyes of some americans meanwhile despite some grim realities in its performance in the conflict china has found the war to be a source of inspiration so this aggressive revisionism in the hands of the chinese is not limited to elite proclamations because in 2021 the battle at lake changjin a film retelling the fighting around the chosin reservoir became the highest grossing chinese movie in history commissioned for the party's centenary celebrations by the ccp's central propaganda department This movie makes for surreal viewing, suggesting that the Korean War began with MacArthur's invasion at Incheon. Mao Zedong, who at that time was the premier, portrayed as a fatherly warrior saint, deploys legions of strapping peasant boys to repel sinister hordes of capitalist warlords from the Chinese periphery. Mentions of the Soviet Union, and even more strikingly. Koreans are in short supply but clearly they want to assist the film in the modern day scenario ki bas aaj ki date mein un logon ko realize karwana hai ki this was not in any case helped by south koreans or in the case of north koreans chinese were actually fighting the americans directly so united states must not practice its own form of fictionalization by forgetting or misinterpreting the korean war's lessons particularly because china's active albeit highly distorted revival of the war's memory should be taken as an indication of its belligerent present day intent so anniversary speeches such as these and movies such as the battle at lake changjin are themselves a form of preparation for war again taken in combination with explicit statements by z that his generals must be ready to dare to fight and evidence that the chinese have already begun to fight for taiwan in the information and cyber domains there can be little doubt about what is coming if washington does not urgently commit to applying the korean war's lessons properly understood तो मैं आपको पहले बता चुका हूं कि वो एक आर्टिकल के अंदर हमने देखा भी था कि चाइनीस तो खुद इस बात को समझ रहे हैं जितने भी दुनिया के कमेंटेटर्स हैं वो इस बात में यकीन रखते हैं कि 2027 इज दैट ईयर व्हेन चाइनीस विल बी अटैकिंग ताइवान and in its last war with china washington failed to deter its adversaries failed to prepare its military and prolonged the fighting ultimately accepting outcomes in 1953 that would probably have been available in 1951 had it adequately projected its own result the next time stakes will be even higher and washington must do better in that cause So this is the article we have जिस कदर हमारे so called आज modern day Taiwan Strait के अंदर जो वेपनाइजेशन हो रहा है ये आर्टिकल उसी के बारे में हमें सजेस्ट करता है कि कोरियन वॉर जो आज से सत्तर साल पहले हुआ और जिस कदर चाइनीज टैक्टिक्स आपके तब भी डिप्लॉय किए जा रहे थे इन ऑर्डर टू विन ओवर द कॉन्फिडेंस ऑफ द पीपल और द ग्लोबल मीडिया आज भी उन्होंने अमेरिकन के लिए यही बात बताई है दैट यू आर नॉट सपोज टू फोगेट द सो कॉल्ड कोरियन वॉर जबकि यू नीड टू लर्न द मीनिंगफुल लेसन एंड डिप्लॉय द एडिक्वेट ट्रूप स्ट्रेंथ जो मेन दो उन्होंने बात की एक मिलिट्री रिस्ट्रेंट और एक कैपेबिलिटी कि आपने उस समय भी बहुत ज्यादा मिलिट्री रिस्ट्रेंट जो है वो बढ़ता था कैपेबिलिटी आपकी डिक्लाइन हो रही थी मिलिट्री स्पेंडिंग आपकी बहुत नीचे चली गई जिसकी वजह से ये लेसन देखने को मिला तो आज के डेट में वो इन्हीं बातों के ऊपर इन्वोक करके बात कर रहे हैं
सो दैट्स दी आर्टिकल वी हैव गाइस कि व्हाई अमेरिका फॉरगेट्स एंड चाइना रिमेंबर्स और ना सिर्फ रिमेंबर्स पर वो तो फिक्शनलाइजेशन करके उसके उसके सो कॉल्ड अकाउंट्स को दोबारा रिलिव कर रहे हैं ऐसा उन्होंने बताया है इस आर्टिकल के अंदर 